Welcome to 5 Minute 40k, the short, sharp look at all things hobby. Happy Friday, Games Workshop have sprung a balanced data slate and a whole raft of FAQs on us. We knew this was coming, but they've just been released this afternoon as I am recording. So I have gone through the balanced data slate and the FAQs to work out what's changed, well, so that you don't have to. So this video is just going to be a short, or as short as I can be, guide to what has changed. I've tried to pick on the things I think are interesting. I don't, if I've missed anything or there's anything I haven't covered properly, do let me know down in the comments. I say I'm recording this shortly after the balance data slate and the FAQs have actually been released. So anyway, onwards with the review. So the balance data slate. Well, big changes, not really. The changes in this really affect one faction, namely the Drakari. Specifically, they get two changes. So Talos and Kronos, which obviously have become very prevalent since their point drops in the last balance state slate and have led to the list archetype people call Fix City, um, they lose the core keyword. That means they're going to lose out on quite a few buffs, um, particularly, for example, the Homunculus's aura of plus one toughness, which affects core coven units um, among other things as well you know other stuff that affects core so that is quite big um, the other big change here is the artists of the flesh obsession this is an all-consuming obsession so it replaces you you know it's, it's custom but you don't get another one with it um, this has been changed so it's effectively now like the orcs ramshackle rule i.e you only get minus one damage obviously to a minimum of one on attacks that are strength seven or less so previously it was just minus one damage for stop so even big weapons las cannons etc just you know still minus one damage now it's it's much more like ramshackle so it means if you're putting your anti-tank weapons into stuff with this obsession it's more likely to kill it basically um so again probably dealing with that thick city uh, list that has come to dominate the drakari meta and indeed certainly for a while um has been doing very very well at tournaments Good news for players of other factions, the changes from the Aster Militarum, Chaos Space Marines, both flavours of Knights, Imperial and Chaos, Necrons and the Orcs are still in here. I mean, I say good news, I guess if you're an Orcs player, that's not good news. Um, but those changes are still in here. Um, and obviously the universal match play rule on aircraft is still in here. It's a bit of a weird document, this, because it's not like a markup. It's just like they're just going to add stuff to it. Um, so not really sure how much useful, how much use that is going forward. I hope they, you know, just stick to showing us what the changes are uh maybe in some form of markup i don't know uh but maybe that's just the lawyer in me speaking who knows um anyway that is the balanced data slate so really the big change for drakari getting hit with the nerf bat and you know are people gonna miss thick city you know what drakari players you let me know in the comments down below i have a drakari army but i haven't played thick city i don't have the models for it um so i don't know how good it is presumably very good so let me know what do you think of these changes down in the comments and so on to the core book FAQ. Also, it's quite a few changes here. So there's a clarification about models models coming out of drop pods, um, which is that they are reinforcement units if they disembark on the turn their transport drops, their transport being a reinforcement unit itself. Um, basically, this means they can be targeted by strats or abilities that let you shoot a unit when it turns up on reinforcements, but obviously not if they then disembark later. Um, obviously, they can still be shot in the shooting phase, but like not immediately by those abilities. So that's quite a nice change. Um, another one, and this one's quite funny to me, this is that battlefield quarters have to be proper quarters of a board. Um, I think this really, no one has ever gotten away with this, but this comes uh, in the face of some potential jank with one of the orc secondaries, which talks about dividing the board up into quarters and having, I think, units of boys in every quarter, not in necessarily individual units, but just having some, some orc boys in there. And there was a way, of course, you could divide up the board with four vertical, you know, boxes that were technically quarters but obviously you would then instantly get all the points for having units in all of those so a bit ridiculous but anyway that's been just sorted out uh redeploy abilities they have been clarified so that unless specified in the ability you have to redeploy on the battlefield itself i.e if you take a unit off the board and it says it can go into strategic reserves then it can otherwise it has to appear back on the board um disembarking from a transport i think this is quite a nice change this basically says when it's destroyed and you're disembarking from a transport um only models that cannot be placed uh, are actually destroyed it's not the whole unit you don't lose the whole unit um so you can actually still get away with placing one or two models so if your enemy surrounds you if you can still get within three inches obviously when the uh, transport explodes assuming you survive on the dice roll then uh, yeah you can still be placed Another one about pairs of weapons and additional attacks, just a clarification that if you have a rule that says if you carry two X, 
two weapons, you get plus one attack. That rule is specific to, you know, you get plus one attack for having two. You don't get plus one for each one of the weapon, i.e. two attacks for having a pair. Um, there are um, some weapons that ignore this, obviously. Lightning Claws being one, they do give you an extra attack for every individual one you have, so worth checking. But as a general rule, just something to remember. Um, little clarification about fighting aircraft, just an amendment to cover fly units, charging aircraft, and finishing within engagement range of an aircraft. Um, one that's causing quite a lot of fuss, which is the rule um, that's been added on to the uh, remaining stationary rare rules bit of the addendum, um, which talks about no unit, a unit can't charge after disembarkation, even if a transport counts as remaining stationary and has moved. So if a transport has moved, counts as remaining stationary, and then a unit inside has a rule that says it can then still disembark after that move, that unit cannot charge. Um, there's an argument that's raging on the internet right now about whether this affects things like truck boys. Um, I guess harlequins would also be cool because they have some abilities like this who can disembark out, uh, disembark and charge out of a transport that has actually moved. Um, but the wording here is very specific to uh, the remaining stationary addendums and neither of those abilities depending on remaining stationary. So it probably doesn't apply, but we're going to have to wait, you know, it's, it's debatable. We're going to have to wait for a further clarification from GW. So an example may be of some bad rules writing because it's not clear straight away. They've done an addendum, you know, a clarification that it's not clarified anything. But, you know, hey, that's where we are. So look out for an update on that one. Um, and obviously, if you're at a tournament and this comes up, ask your TO for a ruling because obviously this can probably be argued either way. And I'm sure people will try and argue it that, you know, Orc truck boys can't do it, etc. So worth checking. Um, another one uh, just talks about the fact that disembarkation uh, isn't remaining stationary, so you can't disembark from a transport and claim you've remained stationary and therefore get abilities that allow you to remain stationary, or sorry, abilities that allow you to remain stationary just don't apply. Um, quite a big one, I think, you know, aligns it with the, um, the strategic reserves rules and, you know, just stops you getting away with jank and using abilities that you gain on having remained stationary. So, seen it in a lot of tournaments already ruled like this and, you know, pretty standard. Um, another one, which is that units embarked in a transport are subject to the same modifiers for range attacks as the transport itself. So if it's an open top transport and it's, you know, the transport itself is subject to a minus one to hit uh, modifier, then the unit inside are also subject to that minus one uh, to hit targets modifier. So nice and simple. And finally, um, a nice clarification that says that rules that modify the range of psychic powers cannot affect the range of psychic actions. So there are certain abilities, and Thousand Suns have a few, that allow you to extend the range of your psychic powers. Um, those do not apply to psychic actions, so you can't do those. Those are, are completely separate. And that really is the core book FAQ. So let me know what you think of these changes, um, probably some bigger than others, down in the comments. So few little changes in the uh, faction FAQs. First up, Adeptus Sororitas. F in the chat, guys, for the Adeptus Sororitas. Uh, they've confirmed that Retributors can only use one of their Armorium Cherubs. They can be given two, but one per turn. Um, a lot of tournaments were already doing this. As I say, Editor's Note, boo. Um, I have an Adeptus Sororitas army, and I, I love Sister Battle. I think they're a great army. Um, and obviously, yeah, this is a slight nerf to Retributors. Having already taken a nerf uh, in, the, uh, in the recent points changes as well in the Munitorum Field Manual. So bad times for the Retributors, but not... Not entirely unexpected. Again, I've seen tournaments uh, ruling it this way. Certainly ones I've been to here in the UK. Um, they also make clear, and again, I don't know anyone that was playing this the way that you're not supposed to, but hey-ho, um, saying that you can't do two Vanguard moves, i.e. two consecutive pre-game moves, if you have two Dominion units in one Rhino. Again, don't really know anyone who was playing it the other way, but whatever. Good. Glad it's in here. Adeptus Mechanicus, uh, they specified that you can use the Aggressor, imper I put Imperative Doctrina, Doctrina Imperative is the right way to say it, um, which basically gives you a plus three inches to your move and minus one to your save, that's the downside of it, uh, but you can do it in the first battle round to ensure that a Cerberus Raider gets basically that plus its normal uh, pre-game move rule, so Cerberus Raiders have a rule um, which is called Skirmishing Line, which means that they can make a normal move in the first battle round, um, and their normal move is 12 inches, so basically 15 inch start of game move. So it gives you the ability to kind of move your Cerberus Raiders around a little bit more, so that's quite nice for them. 
Chaos Demons, uh, there's a caveat on the Virulent Blessing Psychic Power, which gives you plus one to wound, and a seven plus to wound, it gives you double damage. Um, they only last until the next Psychic Phase, so that wasn't in there before for some reason, so I can only assume that some people were playing it as, I give it to a unit, that unit has it for the rest of the game. Uh, it's like a sort of Psychic Power that gives you a permanent upgrade. Um, so yeah, they've they've clarified that in this. Um, again, I'm not a Chaos Demons player, let me know if I've got that wrong, um, but it seems like a sensible clarification to me. Uh, the Necrons have this one weird rule, I know it sounds like one of those internet adverts, um, that Doomstalkers can fire Overwatch. It's a clarification that Doomstalkers can fire Overwatch if they have moved. I, I, I have no idea why this needed clarifying. If I've missed something, Necron players, please give me a shout. Perhaps uh, Drakir Paints, uh, my friend Rich, could, could let me know because I, 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 I assumed... They could still fire Overwatch. I don't know why. I know the Doomstalker had some rules about if it moves, it can't fire on its top profile, but I didn't know it couldn't Overwatch. I don't know. It's weird. Sorry, ne Necron's having a bad time uh, in this one. Anyway, moving on. Uh, and finally, Salamanders. Um, there's a clarification that you can use the Burning Hands Psychic Power, but it applies to attacks by the Psyker that don't use its melee weapons, i.e. you're punching them in the face with your Burning Hands, as the name suggests, uh, rather than using your melee weapons. And obviously, every time you hit, it does a mortal wound. Um, so that's quite cool. Uh, moving on from the faction FAQs, we also got some FAQs for the Octarius Rising Tide uh, Warzone book. So um, this one, the first one of these I think is really funny. Um, so this is the Fortress of Redemption. If anyone has the Octarius uh, Rising Tide book, go and have a look because I had to go and have a look because I was a bit like, what? Wait, why is this in here? They've clarified that the frag storm missiles from the Fortress of Redemption uh, ter uh, terrain or fortification piece uh, get damage one. Uh, yeah, in the book, they're printed as having zero damage. Uh, so good, I guess, if anyone's bringing a Fortress of Redemption. Uh, the, there's a few FAQs here as well for the different um, specialist uh, detachments or, or armies of renown that were given in the book. So the Death Watch Kill Team Strike Force, which is the army of renown, uh, they confirm that if you use the Honored Veteran... Honored, honored veteran of the watch stratagem, uh, to get which gives a squad sergeant a warlord trait. The squad as a whole just doesn't benefit; it's only the sergeant. And they've obviously said that therefore this means that where you have, um, you know, I guess stuff that gives an aura, for example, the they won't take effect on the rest of the squad. They only take effect if the sergeant is the only model left. And they've given some examples here of um, Imperium sword, speed of the Primarch, or Oathkeeper. So to take the example of the Imperium Sword, it refers to the first bullet point, which meet, which says you can re-roll charge rolls made for this Warlord. What it's saying is you basically can't do that until the Sergeant is on his own, because the squad shouldn't be re-rolling charges. Fair enough. Uh, the Astra Militarum Cadian uh, units, the, the sort of Cadian uh, rules that were in the book, the additional ones, um, it basically clarifies that if you use the Field Promotion Stratagem uh, that allows you to make a Cadian Officer model your Warlord when your initial or actual Warlord is destroyed, and then give that officer a warlord trait that your army hasn't used um there's sort of no point doing it if you're going to give them old grudges uh, or gifted commander because both of those warlord traits have effects that are described as happening pre-game um so you, you wouldn't be able to do anything with them obviously this does assume that old grudges and gifted or gifted commander were not used on the destroyed warlord because you then you couldn't do it anyway because it has to be a warlord trait you haven't used so nice little clarification there uh, for the Astrobilitarum. And finally, the Tyranids uh, in the Leviathan rules, uh, it's just a clarification that the Gestalt Commander Warlord trait only lets you select one of the seven Hive Fleet specific Warlord traits uh, in each turn for that Warlord. Um, so again, I think this was pretty clear actually in the wording, but obviously some people questioned it, so it has been uh, has been clarified. Um, so you can't select generic Tyranids uh, Warlord traits, you have to select the ones that are in the Codex described as Hive Fleet Warlord traits. So pretty cool all round. Next up, we've got the Imperial Armor Compendium, and I have split this one up a bit because um, I think these are actually more interesting. So we've got, first up, the Adeptus Custodes. So they've aligned the Adracite and Pyrethite Spears, try saying that when you've had a few drinks, to damage two uh, along with the rest of the Codex. So your Custodian Guard that carry those, the Forge World version, they get the two damage. Fair enough, that's cool. 
bigger change the martial Qatar ability and i mean leadership 11 is leadership 11 whatever um it goes on to all the infantry units i've said for everyone but it's all the forge world infantry which is custodian guard with the adracite pyrothite spears the sagittarum custodians who are the shooty guys the aquilon terminators who are pictured at the top there uh, the agamatus custodians and the venatari who are the guys with the jetpacks um i put editor's note noise because yes this is good this means that all these units benefit from the martial katars um and those buffing abilities on the custodies units which is pretty good it's what we wanted and to be fair probably what custodies players expected um aquilons also get the teleport homer keyword so they can use some some stratagems in the book um we it's confirmed that the contemptor units get core so the contemptor galatus and the contemptor achilles the achilles is the one shown here with a big old dread spear galatus is the guy with the sword and shield you've probably seen and i've included him in other videos um they both get the core keyword and leadership 11 so they can benefit from a lot of buffs again not unexpected given the contemptor in the book is core uh, and most contemptor dreadnoughts are core so fair enough um but yeah great good change makes them even better than they already are um some vehicular changes uh these are quite interesting uh palace grav attacks getting leadership 11 whatever great um the caladius grav tank the coronas grav carrier the orion assault dropship and the Ares gunship all get the machine spirit keyword and leadership 11 but leaving the leadership 11 aside the machine spirit thing is interesting i think particularly on the caladius um the reason why is it gives you access to the stratagem that's shown on the screen here which is retribution of the machine spirit basically for one cp uh you can select a machine spirit model in the army and until the next of the command phase uh, it's considered to have all its full runes remaining so it can act on top profile um that's quite good on something like a caladius which is probably seeing i mean it's good on everything but the caladius is probably where you're going to see it it's probably another good reason to to take them um and also you know worth noting the caladius was part of the second placed army at uh, the recent lvo uh custodies um run by i believe matt laura was the chap's name uh again i've done a video on this on the channel i'll put a link to it uh it on screen about now um so yeah go and check that out if you're interested to see what caladius is clearly can do in a custodies list but all in all good change again if you're another fellow custodies player i've got custodies army uh let me know what you think you're happy with this i think you should be personally the only thing that is a bit odd about this that is worth saying is that the telemon dreadnought um I, I don't actually know off the top of my head what his leadership is but he didn't get leadership 11 so you know i believe I said in the actually I was chatting to uh, in, in Mikey from Hellstorm Wargaming's chat earlier when he was uh, looking at this and I did say you know big lad poor leadership it's the price you pay um, so there there we go the Telemon doesn't benefit next up in the imperial armor compendium we've got the tau empire quite a lot of changes here now i must admit i haven't looked in detail through the new tower codex so if i get anything wrong here please be nice please forgive me um but my understanding is that basically the xv9 hazard the xv107 arvana and shazo rely i think i pronounced that right um this the changes that are shown that you can see on your screen now they basically align uh their sort of war gear and their support system options to the way that battle suits now work in the codex so they can sort of add those on they don't have to replace uh a weapon for a support system they're just a war gear option also makes the battle suits infantry as well again which is a change in the new codex um it's also a confirmation that shaz o rely who has these black light marker drones that can sort of designate targets within 48 inches it used to be you know like a regular marker light it was like a, a gun that you fired basically they can do that with the new marker light action so they get deleted effectively as a, as a weapon profile on his data sheet and just become part of the uh part of the the action system that marker lights now work under uh the xv 109 yavara which is the cool dude with a big flamethrower um again i believe it aligns to the codex uh, it becomes a vehicle like a lot of the bigger battle suits uh, and the shielded missile drones become war gear options rather than a sort of a separate data sheet profile uh, tetras again adjusted in line with the codex their high intensity marker light rule again goes from being a weapon profile to rolling 2d6 when performing the new action which is pretty cool gives you an opportunity to dole out more marker lights and so maybe some play for them tower players let me know in the comments i'll be interested to know if you're uh, going to be using tetras along with all of the new spice that comes in the codex uh, the DX6 Remora drones gain the marker like keyword and removes the only hit on a six bit of the uh, of the seeker missile profile. Again, I think aligning with the codex. The AX-1-0 Tiger Shark. I don't know what the difference is between this and the regular Tiger Shark. Tau players let me know. Uh, but it, it now gets what the regular Tiger Shark does, which is it can have a cyclic ion blaster as, as its weapons. Cool. 
great okay uh, and finally the manta the giant coffee table flying coffee table forward slash very expensive forge world piece of uh, resin uh, you add the sept keyword to the devilfish sky rays and hammerheads that it can carry because it didn't have them before and obviously it gains marker like keyword so some cool changes for the tau uh, again let me know what you think tau players down in the comments and finally, um, a few little extra tidy ups, the Tyranids, the Eldar and Chaos. So for the Tyranids, and this one actually is quite cool. And I say this is a Tyranid player who has a Stonecrusher Khan effects. So the Stonecrusher Khan effects now, uh, which is the, by the way, is the little dude shown on your screen at the top here. Um, it makes the Wrecker Claws, which is what he's modeled with, um, as the uh, the standard weapons. So these are basically strength 14, AP minus three, three damage. And the Bio Flail. Uh, which previously was the standard and the record clause for the upgrade, um, becomes the upgrade. And the bioflow is, you know, strength eight, AP minus one, two damage. So it's it's pretty cool. It's a nice way to uh, give some play to them. So I don't know if that's going to result in points adjustments. Uh, I'm not sure, but, you know, hey-ho, pretty cool for the same crusher card effects. Probably going to see some play in all of those nice crusher stampedes list. I'm thinking of taking one. Um, let me know if you think that's a terrible idea uh, down in the comments below. Um, the Eldar Phantom Titan, not something I think you're going to see on pretty much any table, but hey, if you're a big fan of Apocalypse, maybe you're going to see one of these. Um, the slight change up to the weapons options. Basically, the Bright Lance used to be the replacement for the Star Cannons. It's not anymore. They now have to replace it with a Pulse Laser fair enough if you're a phantom titan owner titan owner and you're annoyed by that or you have feelings on it again let me know in the comments always good to hear from people who've shelled out for a titan um and finally the chaos decimator so just a clarification here that the soul burner petard which is it does mortal wounds when it hits um it, it doesn't because it doesn't need to wound it ignores abilities like transhuman physiology again I would have always assumed it's played this way. I can only assume that somebody somewhere, you know, at a tournament or something has tried to say, well, you know, I have transhuman. I can only be wounded on a four plus ergo. You have to abide by that. And it's like, no, you don't because I'm just hitting you and then you take mortal wounds. So a bit of a weird one, um, but, you know, not an unwelcome clarification for chaos. So that's it that's a quick run through or as quick as i can be of what i think are all the major changes there are other faqs on the uh, gw or the warhammer community page sort of link to it um those don't contain any changes i think that's where they've just deleted things um it's slightly annoying that they don't do it as a markup so it's quite hard to tell where things have been removed um but nonetheless those are the big changes that i have been able to find uh, i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it's useful uh, do let me know thoughts feelings whatever down in the comments and obviously as always i wouldn't be doing youtube if i didn't say uh, don't forget to like and subscribe lets me know you guys are enjoying it and obviously motivates me to want to make more of these uh, slightly rambling videos um so yeah until next time or all that remains to say is until next time uh, happy hobbying and uh, see you around on the next episode of five minute 40k